it was good enough for my granddad. It was good enough for my dad. So I thought, why not good enough for me? I remember getting on that chair and it set off going, I thought, this is not right, this. And I thought, if I can get off, I'll scrim up that rope. I don't care if it is greasy. I'll try and get back up there as quick as I can. And it starts going down and down and down. And you think, will I see my mum again? <laughs> I was 16 year old whenever I went in, and my uncle took me in the coal mines, and I've seen them get killed in there, Lord have mercy. Big rocks fall on them and kill them. You relied on each other. You relied on each other to get back out of that pit at the end of the shift. You needed each other to do it, and so you became to be part of a team, a proper team. And that's comradeship, that. It's just like a big brotherhood. Uh, when you go to work, everybody's friends. They're like family. They know your kids. You know their kids. Uh, a lot of times uh, on the weekend, they'll say, well, come on down, we'll go fishing or we'll go camping. Sometimes their wives go shopping together. Or we'll go hunting together. and We just do stuff for each other. If they said they were going to open court and wood tomorrow, I'd get my spade and go and help to dig all back out again. <laughs> That's how I feel about mining. Yeah. If I was able, I'd go back in them next week. I loved it. And in the winter time, it's warm in there, and the summer time, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's always life after. There's always things to do and you've got to move on. But it's difficult. And uh, a lot of my friends, uh, my old mates and that, that used to work in the pits with me, and they still say now, there's not a lot of life after coal. You know, it kills the villagers. <laughs>